Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to the final day of two weeks of Elizabeth Gaskell. Today I'm going to be talking about the brilliant, the wonderful, the incredible North and South. Chapter One. Haste to the Wedding. Edith, said Margaret gently. Edith? But, as Margaret half suspected, Edith had fallen asleep. She lay curled up on the sofa in the back drawing room in Harley Street, looking very lovely in her white muslin and blue ribbons. If Titania had been, ever been dressed up in white muslin and blue ribbons and had fallen asleep on a dark crimson damask sofa in the back drawing room, Edith might have been taken for her. So North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell is my second favourite book of all time after Charles Dickens's Our Mutual Friend, so it's pretty high up on my love. I think it is one of the best books ever written. It is definitely one of my favourite books ever written. I love it like beyond all measure. I've read it four or five times and every time I read it I discover new things and I love new things and I just can't, can't recommend this enough. It is absolutely brilliant, wonderful, a good place to start with Victorian literature, a good place to carry on with Victorian literature, a great place to start with Gaskell, just a book that like everyone should read because it's just, it's so good, it's so good, it's just, it's just amazing. So let me explain what North and South is about. I like to fondly refer to North and South as Pride and Prejudice and Industrialization or Pride and Prejudice and Mills because the central love story bears some similarities to Pride and Prejudice, it has that kind of feel to it. We have a man and a woman who meet who don't like each other but also in a strange way are kind of drawn to each other and drawn together. But what I love about North and South and the reason why I love it a great deal more than Pride and Prejudice, much as I love Pride and Prejudice, is everything that's going on around that and the wealth of social criticism, social awareness and examination of industrialization that takes place in North and South. It is an industrial novel looking at the changes in British society taking place in the 19th century, looking at the divide between the industrial North and the more rural South in Victorian times, looking at political economy and the running of mills, looking at class and class conflict and different viewpoints and that is why I love it. We follow the character of Margaret Hale. She has been brought up in the South of England, moving between her father's parish of Helsham in Hampshire and also living in London where she was educated with her cousin. After her cousin's wedding Margaret goes back home to Helston to see her parents and to see the beautiful village where she grew up. However her father who has been a clergyman all his life soon begins to feel that he can no longer continue on as the vicar of Helston because he is no longer fully convinced by the doctrines of the church, he still believes in God, he's still religious, but he feels himself increasingly drawn to non-conformist religion rather than the Anglican church. He therefore gives up his position at Helston and moves his wife and his daughter and their faithful servant Dixon to the industrial town of Milton Northern. Milton is a sort of fictionalised version of Manchester. It is a town full of mills, full of factories, in which industry and trade are the most important things. Mr Hale sets himself up there as a tutor and takes on various pupils, including one Mr Thornton who is a factory owner and who is just one of the greatest characters in literature. So things that I love about North and South. Firstly it contains, in my opinion, the greatest love story in literature. This is my favourite love story of any book ever. I think it is absolutely incredible, it is wonderful, it is beautifully done, beautifully said. The descriptions, especially from Mr Thornton's point of view in this book, are so rich and so wonderful. One of the things I love so very much about Elizabeth Gaskell is the psychological complexity of her characters and how good she is at capturing the feelings of characters, often without saying them out loud, often without even necessarily exploring them on the surface, but doing small things which explain feelings to you so much in which you can so clearly understand a character. It's lovely as well that we get to see from Mr Thornton's as well as from Margaret's perspective and I really enjoy how we follow them both. I genuinely think that some of the passages in this book written from the perspective of Mr Thornton are some of the very best Gaskell ever wrote and some of the best like pieces of writing ever written ever because they are so beautiful and touching and incredible. And Margaret as well is such a fascinating wonderful character. I really love her strength of character and her emotional fortitude. I suppose there are moments in this book where there are difficult things that must be done that everyone around her can't bear to do and Margaret says no I will do it, I will do what has to be done because she is that kind of character. But for all her intelligence, for all her psychological and emotional strength she also feels things very deeply and we get such a close examination of her psychology. I think she is a wonderful wonderful character. In fact all of the characters in this book are so thoroughly complex. Mr and Mrs Hale, Margaret's parents, I find wonderful characters. Mr Thornton's mother is one of the greatest characters in literature ever but she is a woman who is incredibly tough who really doesn't feel much love for anyone apart from her son but she respects her son so very much and they have a really wonderful and sort of quietly tender relationship between her and Mr Thornton between her and her son that I think is absolutely wonderful. I also really enjoy her relationship with Margaret Hale. They don't really like each other but part of the reason why I think they don't really like each other is that they do recognise elements of similarities in their characters and there's a bit of Mrs Thornton I think who rather respects Margaret 
even though she doesn't like her and some of the reasons why she respects her are part of the reasons why she doesn't like her something I find really really interesting and I also like the character of Mr Thornton's sister Fanny who is a little bit pathetic. She is very frivolous in her care, she is weak-willed, she doesn't know what she wants, and yet she isn't exactly criticised for that because that's just how she is. One of the things I really like about Elizabeth Gaskell and one of the things I find so interesting about her is her different presentations of femininity and masculinity, but she's not one of those authors that, in having strong female characters, has to get rid of or criticise any other kinds of female characters. I love Jane Austen very much but one thing I do find in Jane Austen is that women who are silly are very very highly criticised. Whereas Fanny Thornton in North and South, though she may be a bit silly, I don't think is as heavily criticised as some similar characters in Jane Austen and is kind of accepted for who she is and you do have moments of sympathy with her. I like the fact that Mrs Thornton, however tough she may be, accepts that her daughter is not like her and still loves her and doesn't try to change her because of that. I think the exploration of that family dynamic is really really interesting. I also love the characters of the Higginses who are mill workers that Margaret befriends. Nicholas Higgins is a fascinating character and the way that Gaskell uses him to explore issues affecting workers in industrial cities and towns in the 19th century is wonderful. He can sometimes be fierce, he can sometimes be cruel, but he also loves deeply, he loves his two daughters very very much and he loves Margaret because Margaret loves his daughters and that means the world to him. And then his daughters Bessie and Margaret are both really interesting characters. I love Bessie and I think she's such an interesting person, especially because one of the things you see in the friendship that her and Margaret share is that Bessie is kind of what Margaret would have been if Margaret had been born in the same class as Bessie. Margaret has a middle class background, Bessie has a very much working class background, but they share a lot of interests and they both have sort of similarly deep thoughts and the way that they discuss things, the way they discuss religion and social problems and their affection for each other I think is so warming and so interesting and they're such an interesting pair. In general every single character in North and South is complicated and fleshed out and fantastic. But moving on from characters to themes because this is where this book just rises above like everything. I I love the exploration of industrialization in this book because it's a book that looks at the effects of industrialization on people, on morality, on the way that people organize themselves. In many ways the book is set up as a series of conflicts, of battles, of juxtapositions. We have the conflict, as you can see in the title, between the north and south of England, between a place like Helsham and a place like Milton. We have the conflict between the rural and the urban and industrial. We have the conflict between masters and workers, between the working classes and the upper classes. We have the juxtaposition between old wealth and new, the idea that the aristocracy are the old wealth but now there are these people, manufacturers, who have lots of money but are not as educated as other people. Where do they fit within society? No one really knows where to place them. The Hales have a lot less money than the Thorntons but they're also a lot more educated so who then is of the higher class. And there's also a juxtaposition throughout the book of kind of logic and emotion, of economy versus religion, of so many things which is set up in the most exciting and dramatic way. And I think the book's exploration of industrialization, its look at trade unions and strikes, the dangers and difficulties of working in factories and the complexities of running them are really really interesting. Another thing that I think is great about this book, as I said in the conflicts, we so often get to see two sides of things. We get to see from Margaret and Thornton's perspective and we also get to see the way that the situation in Milton, the way that industrialization and the problems of the mills is viewed. We get to see it both from the perspective of the Higginses, of Nicholas Higgins who is a trade union man and works in a mill and also from the perspective of Mr Thornton who has to run a mill and how that differs. And I find the book's exploration of industries and strikes and money so so thoroughly important. Another theme that is incredibly important in North and South is the theme of death and grief which is dealt with amazingly in here. One of Elizabeth Gaskell's alternate titles for North and South was Death and Variations which tells you a little bit about some of the themes in this book and I do think the way the book explores grief and death and the way that death can both draw people apart but also bring them together is absolutely wonderful. It is a beautiful moving book in that sense. There are so many fantastic things in this book. There are so many brilliant beautiful lines that I could like quote forever. In my opinion Gaskell's writing is at its absolute best here. It's most moving, it's most poignant, it's most tender and wonderful and beautiful. There are so many things about North and South that I adore so utterly completely. And aside from all of the just general brilliance of the book there are also sentimental reasons why I love this very much as well. It was the first Elizabeth Gaskell book I ever read and I do find that with a lot of my favourite authors the first book by them I ever read goes on to be my favourite because it's when I first discovered their writing and their worlds and their characters and how much I enjoy them as an author. I first read North and South when I was 14, so just over 10 years ago. 
I had seen the TV adaptation before and I'll talk about the TV adaptation in a minute and I read this and to discover that it was amazing and just even better than the television adaptation to discover how utterly brilliant and incredible it is how it contained both a wonderful clever interesting love story but also such fascinating social criticism I loved it so much and I have loved it ever since I have read it many times I have studied it twice both at school and university and I reread it earlier this year and just loved it like even more than I had ever loved it before I had forgotten until I read it earlier this year quite how much I love this book and quite how amazing it is but it's utterly incredible it has such a hold on my heart and it is amazing. I have already mentioned the television adaptation and I do want to talk about this again here because the BBC TV adaptation of North and South is possibly my favourite thing made for screen ever. It is absolutely brilliant, well well worth a watch. If you have read North and South you absolutely must watch the TV adaptation. I watched the TV adaptation before reading the book and that didn't spoil my enjoyment of the book but in general I think it's probably nicer to read the book first. The TV adaptation is not only amazingly acted and brilliantly put together but also the scenes of the mills are like visually stunning and really really good. It is brilliant and incredible and just like one of the best things ever and they change things in a way that infuriates me. There are two moments in that which really annoyed me. They made Mr Bell creepy and I don't know why and they also did a weird thing with Mr Thornton having like a worse temper than he has in the book. Despite those changes which irritated me it's still like pretty much the best screen adaptation of a Victorian book to have been made ever so I would highly recommend that as well as this incredible book. As you may have been able to tell I love Elizabeth Gaskell's North and South rather a lot I would highly, highly, like highly, highly, highly recommend this. It is, in my opinion, one of the greatest books ever written, the greatest love story ever written, also with fascinating explorations of industrialization and economy and with brilliant social criticism throughout. I love it so much. I cannot recommend it enough. You should definitely all read it, like, now. Because I think that is all I have to say on Elizabeth Gaskell's North and South. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please let me know down in the comments if you have read North and South and what you thought of it. And I'll be back very soon with another bookish video. It's Victober now, so you can expect to see rather a lot of Victorian content coming up in the next few weeks.